What does a life of health look like? Not just physical health, what's relational health look like? What's spiritual health look like? Uh, what's mental health look like? How do, how do I walk the road that's healthy? That a person has to realize that there's an issue to begin with. If they don't realize there's a problem, then they will see no need for design laws or design for more because in their mind, um, everything's okay. The same dynamics I see used as entertainment are a lot of the dynamics that people bring to me in therapy that they want help with. You can't get love in an atmosphere without freedom, and you can't get love by threatening people who don't love you. Does that make sense? Yes. You should start thinking of your theologies. Is there a theology that teaches that God wants my love, but if I don't love him, he'll torture and kill me? Welcome to Design for More. I'm Dr. Tim Jennings, and our show is sponsored by Common Reason Ministries and Honey Lake Clinic. I'm joined today by Danielle Rome, one of our therapists at Honey Lake, and Pastor Ed Anderson, one of our chaplains. Pastor Ed, tell us a little about yourself. And I want to tell you both of you that I'm really thankful you're on our show and part of the show. But mm-hmm. tell us a little about yourself. Well, first of all, uh, Dr. Jennings, thank you so much for inviting us. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you. I mean, you're you're awesome. <laughs> but uh, I am a pastor. I've been in ministry now for uh, 26 years, been married for 28 years. I've done a lot of ministry literally all over the world. Um, like what, I love what people. parts of the world? Uh, so I've been to... <sighs> what, uh, five of the seven continents? So I've been in Africa, Europe, uh, and South pastoring America. Pastoring in these places. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and ministering. And um, I love what I do, but I, I enjoy what I'm doing here at Honey Lake to be able to help people walk through some of their darkest times in their lives and help them process those things. And so I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to be here. And what's different about pastoring at Honey Lake than pastoring in other like churches or things like that? Well, the biggest thing is I get to do a lot of one-on-one you know, uh, being in a church uh, with with multiple people, you try your very best to do one on ones, but it's kind of hard when there's a lot of people. Uh, but to be able to do one on ones on a daily basis with the patients here at Honey Lake, it's a it's very rewarding, and I feel like I'm I'm accomplishing something because I can see the results of it. And we're gonna come back and talk about that mm-hmm. aspect, mm-hmm. but I want to uh, you know just put out there. We're gonna come back and say, do you mm-hmm. find that? That here at Honey Lake, um, mm-hmm. you know what our show is about, designed for more. Mm-hmm. You're finding you're able to integrate biblical principles to to physical, mental health, and well being in a way that maybe is is unique. Absolutely, and I think in some cases it also, uh, depending upon the patient, it may challenge the way they may have thinking in reference to certain biblical truths and things of that nature. And so I enjoy that part too, not to make them feel bad because of what they may have thought, uh, but to bring a different perspective. If and, that makes any sense. And this is what our show is about, Design for More, is the mm-hmm. holistic integration of the various attributes of our being mm-hmm. uh, in, in uh, along the lines of healthy principles Absolutely. For, for restoration of well-being. And so mm-hmm. you're finding you're able to do that here with as, as a chaplain. Absolutely. And I'm so thankful for that opportunity. Danielle, tell us a little about yourself. Well, first of all, I'm so happy to be here, and I'm so excited for all the things we're going to talk about. Um, I'm a therapist and an art therapist. I'm also an artist, so I see a lot of things in metaphor. So that might come up later on as well. Oh, I love that. I love metaphor. I love metaphor. Yes, I know you do. Okay. <laughs> and the listeners will also know shortly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I so, I haven't been, yeah. So t- no, I was going to say, I just wanted to, is there yes. anything more you can tell us about the art therapy side of it? I mean, my mother and sister are both artists. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. I have no art. In fact, you might find this story funny uh, in high school. <laughs> Uh, I had, uh, I don't know if you remember high school, but they, they, they had certain required classes you had to take. Mm-hmm. Art was one of the required classes. Uh-huh. I got a D minus in art. Oh, that's so sad. Wait, let me let me tell you the kicker here. the The only reason the teacher told me at the end of the class, the only reason she gave me a D minus is because she couldn't have, uh, couldn't stand to give me the F I deserve and have me repeat that class. Oh, that's how no. that's how bad I was in art. Okay, wow. I am total analytic. You probably figured that out about oh, me. No. I have no no artistic really stuff in <laughs> law, yeah. and so so anyway. So wow. I'm very intrigued by your artistic I, ability. My mother, my yes. mother's an artist. She is actually president of the art. All kinds of, and she's really good. Yeah. But uh, I am so glad you said that because um, you do not have to be good at art to do art therapy. <laughs> and um, I mean, it's actually quite sad to hear some of the experiences people have had with um, art teachers because 
like we're all artists when we're kids. The difference between artists and non-artists is did you ever stop making art? Mm. And who made you stop making art, mm. right? And so I think that, I mean, it's such a big advantage of art therapy. You know, there's different neurological properties of different material uses, and um, that's part of my training, but also just this use of metaphor and also the ability to create metaphor and discover your own metaphor. It, it allows these... Um, these conclusions that are drawn in therapy to almost be deeper because it's things that the individual created and discovered out of what they made from their own mind. And so I've really seen that be really beneficial. And, you know, we, the name of our podcast is designed for more and God is the ultimate designer, the ultimate artist and creator. And so I believe that art is a unique way of connecting with God and our purpose as well. Well, I love this as well, because through our shows, we're going to be doing a lot of integration between science, scripture, um, real world problems and experiences, mm -hmm. and, the, and, and the Bible, okay, and, and scripture. Yes. And the scripture is filled with metaphor, yes. simile, analogy, parable, symbolism. And yes. so, so having, uh, you know, and, and I, I, well, I'm not an artist. I, I am. I love the unpacking of the symbol and seeing the deeper meaning through the metaphor, using analogies to help with with, uh, with lessons. I love yes. this cognitive, yes. interpretive aspect of it, and, and we're going to be doing that a lot with a lot of topics and subjects. So I, I, I I'm in, I'm just eager to hear how the artistic piece from your from from what you have gleaned your, your skill set brings brings to our discussion. And then, so, so I'm Dr. Tim Jennings. I'm a board certified psychiatrist, and and I have spent my entire career working on the integration of of the biblical principles with with modern neuroscience and brain and relational health. And I've written a variety of books. I think you all know on these things, like could it be the simple biblical model for healing the mind, or the God shaped brain, how our um, views of God, changing our view of God, uh, transforms our life, and so forth, uh, showing that that um, our belief systems actually have a physiological effect on our on our being. Uh, we change neurobiologically, we change physiologically, and then understanding that there are actually um, laws of health, protocols, principles upon which life operate that governs every domain of our being. And that's why we have the, the, the title Design for More, with the four being the four domains of body, relationship, spirit, and, um, and mind. And we're going to unpack those during this program today. So... And then, looking forward to it. Awesome. yeah, yeah. So, and then, and then, so one of one of the ideas here is that, and then we want our our audience to really kind of come, come, you know, walk with us on this journey. Yes. What is a what does a life of health look like? Not just physical right. health. What's relational health look like? What's spiritual health look like? Uh, what's mental health look like? How do how do I walk the road that's healthy? Can you get? Can you walk a healthy road by by rule compliance? Mm. Well, to a certain degree. I mean, if you're, you have raised your children to 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 brush their teeth and not play in the street and and to take their their you know multivitamin and to eat mm -hmm. this food and that and they follow the rules, there's a certain health that comes from that, isn't there? Right, Absolutely. right. Physical health. Mm -hmm. And they and they memorize their Bible verses and go to church each week and and uh, and you know pay their tithes and and their other, the other rules and and then also I, I know Dr. Jennings when you talk about this whole design for more and how those tie into uh, the design laws and and I and I would love to hear your take on how some of the design laws fit in with the idea of design for more. So that 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 is the reason we we have the name of the show. Mm -hmm. There's a designer, as you mentioned, God, yes, the creator. Yes. And then there are the protocols he built life to operate upon. Okay. And so when you think of the word law, yeah. what, what, what comes to mind when, when you think of the word law? Well, the first thing I think of are laws imposed by government. That's the first thing that I think of. You and, know, I know a little bit more because I have a little bit of insight into what we're going to talk about. <laughs> but I think a lot of the listeners might think about government imposed. And, and this is how... Uh, it's a very legitimate use of the word. Mm -hmm. Okay, that yes. that it has that meaning, but it's not restricted to that meaning. There's another meaning of the word law that 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 we're going to be really helping, and we want people to embrace and move toward law of gravity, mm -hmm. laws of physics, right? Laws of health. And when you think of law like that, you're no longer thinking of a rule. See, a, a, a human law, a rule. If you break it, you get in legal trouble. 
if you break it, you are uh, you ha- have to be punished by someone for there to be justice. Yes. There's yeah. a fine. There's some type of consequence inflicted by an authority. Okay, but if you break the laws of health, you don't. It's not a legal problem. And this is the difference between God's laws and human laws. Right. And many people don't really get this. And I really want to help expand people's minds where they can move out of this this kind of trap of thinking legalistically about right and wrong and more towards reality-based thinking. But here's an example. Humans can, humans, governments can pass laws to make marijuana legal. They cannot pass laws to make it healthy. Right. Right. Okay. God's laws are the laws reality operate upon. Reality is what reality is. If marijuana is healthy, it's healthy. If it's harmful, it's harmful. It is what it is. Passing a law about it doesn't change what it is. Right, right. And learning how to understand reality because it's real. It's the way it works. And what we see happening in our society is, and this is why we wanted to do this show, is because so many people, we have so many patients coming here, they're struggling because in their heart they want to be healthy, they want to be happy, but they have no clue how to get there because they're being told a propaganda campaign uh, by declaration, by proclamation, uh, what 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 is unreal they're told is real, and what is real they're told is not real. Wow. Right, right. And something I've seen a lot is people feel like there's something missing. Right, but they don't necessarily know what it is. And that's part of why I think it's so valuable. We're talking about these different domains of health as well and these different types of laws it's because some people might have somewhat of an understanding of one, but you can't really have he- something that I've heard you say is you can't have health while violating one of the laws of health, for example. That's right. So let's give some simple examples. I don't know how many we'll go into in the show today. But some simple examples that I think most people already know and uh, and can connect with, I think that one of the simplest is the law of exertion. Okay. If you want something to get stronger, you must exercise it because if you don't use it, you lose it. Not just your muscles, not just your muscles, okay, but neurocognitively. Right. You know, strong math ability, got to work problems, strong musical skill, practice your instrument. And as you exercise those circuits, your brain actually branches out, makes new connections, and the circuitry expands. And we can see this on brain scans now. People who exercise those circuits, you can look at them beforehand, and then they learn a new language or they uh, learn an instrument, they practice, and you can see their brain structure will grow in the areas where they're learning this. Same thing for critical reasoning skills. Same thing for anything. On the spiritual side, if people want more faith, Mm -hmm. they have to actually exercise faith. How do you exercise faith? (laughs) Okay. Depends yeah. on what they. I mean, that's another conversation we can right. have at some right. point. Right. We can have to do a show on what is faith because because there's so many different um, beliefs about what that I, what that is, and there's Absolutely. there's a lot of fraudulent things that are harmful, and so people are exercising their faith in in harmful ways. Mm-hmm. And yeah. if you exercise your faith in harmful ways, you'll activate circuits that change your brain in harmful directions. Yeah, and you'll actually undermine your your ability. So this is this is designed for learning how to use your power of choice. Yep. in governance of yourself to harmonize with the laws of health on the various domains. So one's the law of exertion. Uh, another is the law of worship. Mm. By beholding, we become changed. Or in psychiatry and psychology, we call it modeling. We actually become like what we admire, esteem, value, worship, look up to. And you see what's happening. One of the problems in, in, in the world today is so much time and energy uh, is being placed on observing and internalizing things that are actually quite harmful. Right, wow. right. So let, we can give an example. I was I just going to ask that, yes, sir. Would you like an example? Yes, please. About how we're changed by this. So there's content and then there's and then there's media itself. Content and, and the delivery mechanism, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, back in uh, the 1990s, Dr. Centerwall wanted to discover whether television watching, that's the mechanism watching TV, theatrical TV, not educational, uh, course, uh, caused violence in society. Mm. And so he devised this study be, uh, where he evaluated a black and white indicator of, of, of violence, which are homicide rates, murder rates, which are, which are pretty accurately kept in most societies and, easy, and, and, and publicly made available so you can track them. And he looked at three societies, the United States, Canada, and South Africa, before and after the introduction of television. Hmm. Uh, United States and Canada, television came into our society in 1945. There was no television in South Africa until 1974. 
So it was a comparative group. He used Canada because Canada has very strict gun control laws. And if he mm. saw an increase in America, he didn't want people to say, well, you got guns everywhere. So he wanted to compare to, to see if it happened in Canada too, if it happened. And in South Africa, he looked at white on white only homicide to take out apartheid issues. And what he found was that from 1945 to 1974, homicide rates in the United States increased 93%. Wow. In Canada, they increased 92%. And in South Africa, during the same time, they decreased 7%. Wow. You know, here's the kicker. He looked at homicide rates in South Africa after the introduction of television, 1974 to 1987. White on white only homicide increased 110%. Wow. Wow. Okay. Now, some people say, okay, well, you get bad violent content in, you get bad violent content out. Tell me, what was the programming on in America between 1945 and 1974? What type of shows? Leave it to Beaver. Leave it to Beaver. <laughs> Howdy Doody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Andy, Andy Griffith. Griffith yeah. I Love Lucy. Okay, Car yeah. 54. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the violent one. Gunsmoke. What's Gunsmoke and every other one of those get rated today? It's G-rated programming. Really? Oh, right. Mm -hmm. G-rated programming gives you a 92 to 93% increase in homicide rates. It's not the content, it's the medium. So what's the television medium doing to the brain? Theatrical television, not educational. So people are watching our podcast, this is educational. It's actually teaching, requiring to think, okay? Right. Uh, but this has to do with activation of brain circuits, the law of exertion and the law right. of worship by beholding, okay? Uh, theatrical entertainment has the goal to make an emotional reaction, to get you to laugh, to get you to cry, to get you anxious, to get you stressed, to get you fearful, to get you worried, to get you aroused, to get some emotional reaction while simultaneously turning off your prefrontal cortex activity. Wow. You don't think, you don't reason. I've, I have been around many friends and, and they're watching a program on TV and I, and I can't hardly watch anything on TV because if you actually are a thinker, and think about what the, the, the program is doing. It's stupid. Almost all of them are stupid. <laughs> they actually make no sense. The classic is any, any law enforcement program, you will almost always, always, always have a scene in which the, the um, perpetrator is approached by the police, but instead of just going up to the guy on the street and, and, and grabbing him, they call to him across the parking <laughs> lot so you have opportunity for him to run away so you can have a chase scene. Right, right. Isn't it almost true? Yeah. Okay, and, and it's like, you would never do that. Right. Right, okay? right. And if you think about these things, then these things are not entertaining. They're stupid. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'll say, point this out to people who are watching, and they'll go, you're not supposed to think about it. That's right. And so theatrical entertainment, functionally, it's right. it's not the actual content itself. It's what it's doing neurobiologically to the circuits. And so children raised on theatrical programming, even G-rated programming, overdevelop emotion circuits, underdeveloped prefrontal cortex wow. circuits. And by the time they hit adolescence with the hormones hit, they do not have the capacity to process their emotions and self-restraint. Yeah. And thus they act out aggressively, sexually, and look to substances to mm -hmm. calm themselves. And this drives a lot of the, the mental, emotional problems we have yeah. today. So this is one of the design laws. We want to teach mm -hmm. people how they can make intelligent decisions, and things have gotten worse now that we've gotten into the age of the cell phone childhood. Yeah, yep, that okay. aligns completely with that with yep. what I've seen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, so, so as we understand the design laws, there's other design laws, and I think a, a big one that governs relationships. Yes. Yep. Is the law of liberty. Specifically with media, one of the biggest things that I've seen it influence is the way we relate to one another, which is what you're starting to get into, the law of love and liberty. And what I have the most difficulty with when I have tried to watch TV shows and what I struggle to ignore the most is just the horrible communication skills <laughs> and how much, how entertaining it is, entertaining it is to watch people communicate ineffectively with each other and relate problematically with each other and the drama and the conflict that that caused becomes the entertainment factor. But when we go back to what we were talking about before with modeling and becoming what we're watching, I mean, the same dynamics I see used as entertainment are a lot of the dynamics that people bring to me in therapy that they want help with. Mm. So they're becoming like what they're, the dysfunction yes. they're that they're seeing. Exactly. Mm. Because, because the response is, ha ha, that's funny, or oh, that's interesting. And so then- They don't have any good role models. They right. don't have a healthy, so at home- Not only that, but they have a positive internal response to watching the problematic behavior, because it's entertaining and so they it like it. So it reinforces in a positive yes. way yes. to act like the buffoon. 
Right. And so I, I struggle to not just be really annoyed when, <laughs> but yeah. I, I won't deny that it is entertainer. Yeah. <laughs> and I think most of even the programs they have right now is all about entertainment. There's very, very little um, mm-hmm. programming that's educational. Yeah. I, mean, I, I remember, you know, aging myself or dating myself back in the day, you know, we had Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers and, mm-hmm. and things of that nature. So they were, they were more educational, at least for kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now uh, when you talk about the idea of, of people uh, becoming what they're seeing, um, it's because it's, it's, if I can just say it, it's trash. That's a, there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of trash yeah. right now. And so it's easy to become trash based upon what you're, what you're watching, what you're allowing to influence you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when you talk about design laws and talk about design for more and, and, and how everything lines up with each other, it's, it's really sad to see yeah. things the way they are. So how can we help people make decisions to move in healthy directions before they're in crisis? I mean, when they come right. here to Honey right. Lake... Um, they're in crisis and they want help because they're miserable. Yeah. Well, it goes back to what we were talking about laws, right? And reality-based functioning is helping people determine what is reality so then they can make choices that align. In your generation, do you find that there's an interest in empowering themselves? Or not? I, I mean, I, I... I think yes, but I think it can be a false empowerment. But, 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 but I mean, is there a desire there first? Just on the, is, do, do people want to be empowered or do they want to be infantilized? Do they want to be cared for by others or do they want to be autonomous? Your generation, what do you think? Do people, do, do they have a, a general sense of, I want to become my own man, my own woman. I want to be empowered. I want to be able to think, make my own decisions, stand on my own two feet. Or I want to have things handed to me by others who are in power. I think there is an internal conflict there because I hear both coming from the same people. And that might be a longer conversation. No, no, but it goes, it goes because, because if I'm thinking, how can we help them? Yeah. This yeah. idea of understanding design laws empowers people. Mm-hmm. It yes. actually empowers them. Yes. It gives them the power of, of making decisions that, that they can predict. Life becomes predictable. You can make predictable outcomes when right. you understand right. the design laws. And, and I think if I can interject, Dr. Jennings, I think part of it goes back to the fact that a person has to realize that there's an issue to begin with. Right. If they don't realize there's a problem, then they will see no need for design laws or design for more because in their mind, um, everything's okay. But then again, that's based upon their limited perspective too. I think that that also goes into play. So are we, are we only going to be able to help people who are suffering? There's no there's no sense of... of Hey, I, I, you know, when I was when I was growing up, it was probably because of my upbringing, my family, and my my church. But I did not have to actually participate with cigarettes and alcohol and drugs to to know that I didn't want to participate with those things. I was educated enough to know those were potentially harmful. I didn't want to do that to my body. I didn't want to do that to my brain. I remember from an early age as a child that I did not want to do those things. Right. Okay, is that is that idea of hey? Uh, I want to be healthy. That's not healthy. I don't want to do those things. Is that lost in our society today? Everything is everything's healthy. It's healthy to to you know smoke cigarettes and. I, well, I'll let you speak first, and I'll speak. I I don't know. So I think about the people in my generation. I think there is a really strong desire for health and wellness and finding truth and finding empowerment. I think that is actually a really high value. The problem is there's. The, the sources have been confused and scary and mistrusting, mistrustful. So this is what we want to do. We want yeah. to, so, so good. So if that, that the value's there, we want to speak to that audience and say, yes. we've got something. We're not going to tell you the answer. We're right. going to show you how to find the answer. Yes, we're going to, exactly. we're going to teach you. We're not going to tell you the, the, the answer to the math quiz. We're going to show you how to do math. Mm-hmm. Yes. We're going to teach you the laws of math and you can apply those. Once you understand addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, then you can apply that to any mathematical problem. Right. You right. don't have to have somebody tell you the answer. And so this is what our show is about is to teach and empower people to become thinkers, critical reasoners, that they can look at a problem and they can go, wait a second, that doesn't add up because it's violating one of these basic laws upon which life operates. It doesn't yes. work that way. Mm-hmm. So I, I know that can't be true. Mm-hmm. And I think also we want to say to the people that uh, the purpose of the show is to challenge the way they've been thinking about things up until this point. Mm-hmm. I really do. Yeah. I, I really think that for some who may watch, 
Uh, they may start watching these programs with one particular mindset or one particular way of thinking about things, but they're going to be challenged. I really do. Okay, yeah. so 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 you you are telling them that they're not thinking right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad the pastor said that. <laughs> Dr. Jennings would never tell somebody they're not thinking right. <laughs> but I'm glad you did that. Well, thank you. I, I had to take, take one for the team. I took it for the team. There we go. Yes. But no, the truth is, the truth is, all of us have things to learn. Absolutely. And all of us have things to unlearn. Absolutely. Yeah. General Patton famously said, if everybody's thinking the same thing, somebody's not thinking. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm glad you put that out there because we do want to challenge people's thinking. And, mm -hmm. and if, if they only listen to programs that reinforce everything they already know and think, mm -hmm. then yep. they actually are not growing. No. Yep. And so we do want to challenge them. And, and I'm expecting that people are going to learn some things that they didn't learn before from this program. That's great. I mm -hmm. agree. So yeah. I agree. So we want to talk about the law of liberty or, or, we can talk. I'd okay. love to talk about the law of liberty. So re really quickly, yeah. we'll mm -hmm. just throw out what the law of liberty is. It's, it's a design law. Mm -hmm. And if you've never heard of the law of liberty, I tell people, okay, uh, it's on the same magnitude or order of the law of gravity. Right. Uh, and think about gravity. Do you have to believe in gravity for gravity to work in your life? No. If you deny it, I refuse to believe in gravity, and you step off a building, does gravity care? No. It still works. Law of liberty is like this. People may not have heard of it. They, 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 they can say, you, Jenny just made that up. I don't believe in it but it still works. It's a constant. And just like gravity, the only variable is degree. Uh, when I say mm -hmm. variable, there's a variable. Yes. Step off a five inch curb, you twist an ankle. Step off a 500 foot building, you die. Gravity okay. does the same in both places. The only variable is the degree. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yes, sir. And so liberty has three predictable consequences if you violate them. And I'm just going to sum them up and not give stories. But if you're in a relationship in which your freedoms are being violated through threat, intimidation, whether they're physical threats, gun to the head, knife to the throat, whether they're emotional threats, do, don't do what I say. I'm going to pout. I'm going to stomp. I'm going to cry. But you, you're not free. Love will be damaged. Your love for that person will be damaged. You won't love them more. You'll love them less. A desire to rebel, to get free, to get out of that will be instilled. And if you choose to stay in a relationship in which your freedoms are violated, then over the course of time, you actually lose your individuality. You lose the ability to think for yourself, and you become what I describe as a shadow person, mm -hmm. a person who begins thinking through the lens of the person who is threatening them. What will they say? How will they react? Well, they won't like it if I do this. And, and, and you stop thinking about what you believe is best for you to do in governance of yourself, and you start thinking what the other person wants you to do. And these are the three predictable consequences that always happen, predictable, always, and this is testable. You can't get love in an atmosphere without freedom, and you can't get love by threatening people who don't love you. Does that make sense? It yes. does. It yep. does. Did, did, and and did you understand that makes it, it, Do you understand that's true? Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Do you see it's testable? Yes. Yeah. Do you see it's reproducible? Yes. Then do you see this becomes an actual reliable touchstone that you can test People, do they love me? Mm -hmm. And you can test theologies on. Yep. Absolutely. You should start thinking of your theologies. Is there a theology that teaches that God wants my love, but if I don't love him, he'll torture and kill me? Mm -hmm. yeah. If that's being taught, it actually violates the law of liberty. It destroys love. Destroys trust. And in, in, yeah. it destroys trust, incites rebellion. So many people leave because of that theology. They don't right. they don't want to believe in God anymore. Right. Which are actually healthier than the ones who stay and believe it, because the ones who stay and believe it become shadow people. Right. They lose individuality and become mindless religious drones uh, who don't think. Bible said, I believe that settles it. We take that on faith. We don't ask questions. We have blind faith. We have our eyes closed. We're the blind leading the blind in the name of Jesus. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Wow. Because it's a violation of one of God's laws, all in the name of... Righteousness. Now, if you think about who would require one to do that in order to believe in them, the source of all truth, source of all love? No. No. Dictator. Yeah, a dictator. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So, so these are the things we want people to learn. Mm -hmm. And if they learn them, they're empowered by them. And mm -hmm. if they apply them, and so I, I've had patients who are not Christian, mm -hmm. and they're having marital problems, and they have fear in their relationship, and their fear leads them to, to control. And I teach them the law of liberty, and they start actually practicing it, really giving freedom to their spouse to have a difference of opinion and so forth. And guess what happens in those relationships? They heal. Yep. Go stronger. 
Well, if people are watching right now, Dr. Jennings, how can they get more information about this, these design laws that we're talking about? What's a good place for them to start? So there are a variety of different places. Um, on our website, comeandreason.com, they put in design laws. You can get um, blogs, lectures. Um, there are programs you can download PowerPoints for. Um, my, my book, Could It Be This Simple, describes several of them. The book, The God Shaped Brain, describes several, several of them. Uh, so, but on the on the website, there's an actual list, a long list of many of these, and with with descriptions of what they are, and people can download that. They can print that out. So that would be a resource and place people could go. Wow, and that would be great. And I would highly recommend you doing that, most yes. definitely. <laughs> so, I, I want to again thank you guys for being part of this show. I think uh, I, you guys both bring incredible perspectives that are going to help people from different walks of life. Okay, I love the art, love the chaplain, <laughs> the, the, the psychiatry poison, put it all together. But our goal is to actually advance this, this program to help people become empowered, to be mm -hmm. able to understand reality for themselves, yes. uh, not platitudes, not uh, jargon, but make it practical where they can apply it to themselves and actually live a healthy and, and vibrant life. So um, thank you all for joining us today for our program. If you have questions, uh, send those in to us or, or topics you'd like us to discuss, questions at designedformore.net, questions at designedformore.net, and you can always visit the comeandreason.com website for more resources. And if you include a U.S. postal address, we will send you a free gift, a, a Frisbee with our, with our logo on it if you'd like one, uh, as long as supplies last. So thank you for joining us today.